Hello everyone, welcome to 6.1, addition with unlike denominators. The essential question is, how can you use models to add fractions that have different denominators? On this video, we're not going to use models, we're going to save that for class when we actually have models to use. I'm just going to give you some steps and some tips and tricks to help add subtractions. Okay, so I need you to write all these steps, I know it's a lot, but adding and subtracting fractions do take a lot of steps. So let's go ahead and get started, and this might be review for some of you. The first step is to find the common denominator, and I have a separate section right here on how to find the common denominator, but that's the first step. Once you have a common denominator, you only add the numerators, okay? The denominator stays the same. So how do we find the common denominator? Well, you have to look at the two numbers, the denominator, right? And, and just in case you don't know what a denominator and a numerator is, okay, if I have like one half. The denominator is the lower digit of the fraction, and the numerator is the upper digit, okay? So 1 would be the numerator, and 2 would be the denominator. So you need your denominators to be the same when you're adding and subtracting fractions. Now, we're only going to talk about adding today, but it, that rule still applies for that. Um, so how do we find the common denominator? Well, does any number go into the other? Is there a multiple of the two numbers that they can both go in? We'll talk about that. You get a crisscross or do the butterfly method. I've heard both, so I'll show you what that is. And just know whatever you do to the top, you have to do to the bottom. Or whatever you do to the bottom, you have to do to the top. Go ahead and write these steps down. I'll go over these steps extensively with you um, in just a second. Okay, so hopefully you take a second and you pause to write this down. So hopefully you've taken that second. I'm going to print this off so I have a reference because I'm going to go to my... Um, handy dandy blackboard and we're gonna do the math on that so oh you need to have the examples though that would be pretty important so let's look at the first example okay and if you need to pause write that down go ahead and do so Hillary is making a tote bag for her friend she uses one half yard of blue fabric and one fourth yard of red fabric how much fabric does Hillary use Okay, if you need to pause to write that example down, go ahead and do so. Give yourself plenty of space because you're going to need to do the second example as well. All right, so hopefully you paused. I'm going to have the second example right here. So you can pause right now and write it down. So the second example is solve three-fifths plus one-half. All right, so we're going to go ahead and do both examples on my blackboard. And let's go ahead and do that now. So it says that Hillary is making a tote bag for her friend, she uses one half yard of blue fabric and one fourth yard of red fabric. How much fabric does Hillary use? So you're going to find the total, which means you need to add. So let's go ahead and get to it. She has one half and she has one fourth. So when I say you need to find the common denominator, that means these two numbers have to be the same. In order to add or subtract fractions, that denominator has to be the same. So, I'm going to ask, does any number go into the other? Uh, 2 actually does go into 4. You can multiply it by 2. Okay? So we can do that. But I want to um, also go over the other part of that step. Says, Is there a multiple of the two numbers that they can both go in? Well, a multiple of 2 and 4, and you can just multiply the denominators to find a multiple. But a multiple of 2 and 4 is 8. So yeah, they could both go into 8, and you'd get the same answer regardless. I'm going to show you both those methods in just a second. And then I'm going to show you the crisscross butterfly. So let me show you the first part. I know that 2 goes into 4, and I know in order to do that, I have to multiply 2 times 2. That'll get me 4. Well, that's the third step for how to find a common denominator. Whatever you do to the bottom, you have to do to the top. So since I multiplied the denominator by 2, I have to also multiply the numerator by 2. So 1 times 2 is 2, which means my fraction is 2 over 4. And now my denominators are the same. So I could do 2 fourth plus 1 fourth, and you only add the numerators, which makes it 3 fourths. The denominator stays the same. Okay. I'm going to show you a couple other methods. Let's say I didn't know that 2 goes into 4. Well, I could multiply 
And the way I could multiply is I could do the butterfly method, which you go here or crisscross and go here. Okay? So I could do um, 1 times 4 is 4. And whatever I do to the bottom, I do to the top. So I have to do, actually, let me, let me write it like this. 1 times 4 and 2 times 4, because whatever you do to the bottom, you have to do to the top, equals 4 over 8. Okay? And I could do 1 times 2 and 4 times 2, because whatever you do to the bottom, you have to do to the top, and that equals 2 over 8. And when I do that, I can do 2 over 8 plus 4 over 8, which equals 6 over 8. Now you might be thinking, Mr. Morales, the other one, you had a completely different answer. What's up? Well, 6 over 8 is actually the same as 3 over 4. Okay, I'm going to erase this real quick. So if you needed that, rewind and and uh, pause so you can have that. But 6 over 8 is actually the same as 3 over 4. If you were to take 6 over 8 and you were to take and cut that in half, it would equal half of 6 is 3 and half of 8 is 4. So they are the same. And fractions work like that. The, it, it is literally the same answer. 6 over 8 is the same as 3 over 4. So if you get both of those, it doesn't matter which answer it is. They're both correct. Okay. Um, I will not be asking for simplest form right now. If I was to ask you to put it in simplest form, that's a whole other concept, which I really don't have time to get into today. Okay? But those are the two methods to solving the fractions. Okay? You can do the butterfly one, or you can see, okay, what do these have in common? Well, and I could have also said, okay, if I had one half time, oh, no, not times, my bad, plus one fourth, I could have said, oh, they both have eight in common. Well, what I do to get 4 is 8, I multiply that by 2. Whatever I do to the bottom, I have to do to the top. And what do I do to get 2 is 8? I multiply it by 4. And that still gets me 4 over 8 plus 2 over 8 equals 6 over 8. Okay? Now, some of you are very familiar with the crisscross butterfly method, though, you know, 1 half plus 1 fourth, knowing that, oh, okay, these have to be multiplied. Just remember that if you multiply this um, this 1 by the 4, you also have to multiply that 2 by the 4, okay? And if you multiply this 1 by the 2, you also have to multiply this 4 by the 2, all right? So let's go ahead and do the second example. And I know this is a not a simple concept, so please, if you have any questions, write them down. Okay, so here's the second example. 3 over 5 plus... 1 over 2. Okay? I'm going to solve this two ways. Okay? I'm going to look for a common denominator. Well, I know that these both can be multiplied um, to be... To, uh, the common denominator for both, if I multiplied 5 times 2, would be 10. Okay? So I could do that. And I know to get 5 as 10, you got to multiply it by 2, and that means you have to multiply the 3 by 2 which makes it 6. To get the 2 as a 10, you've got to multiply it by 5, which means you have to multiply the 1 by 5, and that makes it 5, which would equal 11 over 10. Okay? Let's do that with the butterfly method now, or the crisscross. 3 fifths plus 1 over 2. Okay? I want to multiply 3 times 2 and 5 times 1. Okay? So, if I did 5 times 1, yes, if I did 3 times 2, I got to do 5 times 2, which equals 6 over 10. If I did 5 times 1, I got to multiply 5 times 2, which equals, and actually that should be, if I multiply 1 times 5, that would mean I have to multiply 2 times 5, which makes it 5 over 10. And then I'm at 5 over 10 plus 6 over 10 equals 11 over 10. And that's your final answer. Okay. 
Um, I just, it didn't really matter that I switched these numbers up right here. I just wanted to, so that way you could see that this fraction right here is being multiplied by the 5, just as this fraction right here is being multiplied by the 2. Okay, hopefully that um, makes it a little bit easier to add fractions. If you have any questions, please make sure you let me know, and you make sure you have a good one as well. Thanks for watching.